Folks, welcome back to So Bad It's Good, presented by Betches Media. Um, at this point, uh, I, Love Island USA is pretty much all I have on the brain, and we are in the last week. We are so close to the finish line. Now, somebody who has been walking me and walking kind of all of us through this, because not only was he on Love Island Season 5, he was also on The Traders, but he knows. He went to the end. He knows. He also has a relationship from this show. So you can't say that this show does not work, but let's get into all of the insanity uh, in the last week and a half. The one, the only, Karsten Bergerson. Bergie, welcome back to the show. What's up, guys? Thanks for having me on again. I'm super excited to talk today. The first thing I wanted to bring up today, did you see that July 5th through the 11th, there was 919 million minutes watched? I mean, j just me alone. I think I accounted 50 million of those minutes. Well, no, that's, I was going to talk, like, they doubled the streaming numbers from last season to this season. And what do you account that for? Why do you think Love Island USA has suddenly taken hold in America? I, the only thing, like, everyone has the same answer. It's the cast this year. I think they all brought their own drama. There was nothing ever really felt safe. Everyone was being authentic authentically themselves and i think that just won people over and then you had like tiktok and social media is such a huge marketing tool like you have like leah and rob edits you have everyone's talking about it on tiktok so that just like the algorithm of it like on social media just probably enhanced this as well yeah, I mean, people are really talking about this show and social media is a huge piece of that. I mean, you really do. I go on TikTok and I'll see kind of like just average people, not average, but like just normal people like me talking about this show. And it really is kind of cool to see. I also think there's a little bit of Ariana in the mix. Not that she's in it a lot, but she brought the Bravo audience or at least let them dip their toes into the water and see that they really dig this show. But, but also I got to say, why the hell have you not been on After Sun yet? I feel like you would be a perfect After Sun guest. Were you approached at all? Because I think you would be a no-brainer just because you were on the Traders as well. Yeah, I don't. I honestly don't know what happened there. They even had Johnny Bananas on. He's like, I know. I, I love seeing like, yeah, you might know me from Traders. I'm like, they know Bergie from Traders. They don't know Johnny Bananas from Traders. Johnny What's Bananas was here? out after the first episode of Traders. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, what? But, um... I, I can say I um, I think it just fell through. I, I don't want to say too much, but um, I wasn't yeah. asked to do After Sun. I was asked to do something else even. That would have been way more cooler in my opinion, but it fell Love through. Love Island Games? No, it was... Uh, it, they wanted to do like a Traders Challenge for Love Island. So I was supposed to come oh. out with a Traders Cloak and then have them do like a Traders Challenge or something. But Oh my God, that would have been awesome. Yeah, so... I don't know, something somewhere along the lines that fell through, but yeah, I wasn't um, planning to do an After Sun episode. I was planning to do that, but that ended up gosh. falling. But I, I mean, I see your perspective is so interesting in this because you have like gone through it. And I was wondering, you know, we're in the last week. The Islanders are in the last week. Some of those people have been there day one. What is going through their heads right now as, I mean, by the way, do they even know they have a week left? I mean, I know all time and space get completely erased while you're there. Do they even know they're at the finish line? Are you aware that like, do they know they have like six days left? I, I think they do. Um, I remember I was counting the days and there's like some days that I still remember what day that happened on. Like the whole Victor and Carmen si situation happened on day 12 or that happened on day 10. Victor left day 12. Scott came in the villa on day 33. Like, I, <laughs> I knew what day I was leaving. Like, I had it all down. But I was also game planning, too. Like, I've been listening to people that have come on your podcast. And, like, they said, like, they completely forgot, like, they were on a game show. But I was fully involved in the game show. I was like, okay, this is day 33. We got six days left. And the, I, the people don't know this, but, like, the final the, – final episode takes like four days to film so like they're already working on the final episode right now see that's what kill well that's what i mean the, these are just basic questions so I, I think the audience is kind of curious though as well is that like when they're filming the elimination or even the game show elements of it with the the challenges 
you know, we see like overhead shots. We see like, I mean, do you guys have to redo those like, you know, uh, those kind of like if Ariana is presenting and she flubs a line, do they go back and redo those? Is there's a lot of like sit around and wait and reset? They normally do that at the end, but Ariana will have to like do her speech like three or four times. Like she'll do it the first time. And then after we do our votes, she'll stand there again. We'll all sit down. And then like the host will then do her lines again. She'll do all of her lines again, do all of her lines again. And then she'll do pickup lines. Yeah. Like, and it's funny now that I sit at home, like I, I realized when it's a pickup line and they edited it in there. Like yeah. when Ariana went, it's a big night tonight. Like, and she was responding to it made it look like she was responding to Kaylor. But I know it was just a pickup line of Ariana just looking in the distance saying it's a big night tonight. <laughs> But it made it look like she was responding to Kaler. And I'm like, that was a pickup line. That wasn't her talking to Kaler. Well, I mean, I'm reading the, I, I just finished this book called Cue the Sun about reality television, which I so love. I loved, but they talk about like Franken editing. And I will say like every reality show does it, but they even did it. And we talked about this briefly uh, before they got back into, to, from Casa was uh, Cordell and Dea. It made it look like from the preview that they were having sex, that they were doing the hippity dippity and they weren't doing that. But the trailer for the night before made it seem like they were. And I was like, this is messed up because you see the actual scene and they were like obviously you know very friendly but it was not sex and i thought it was so interesting is that that's a way to kind of entice the viewers to really amp up the drama yeah no it's and it, they can do that to the islanders too like you don't obviously get the c clips but they they know their ways to amp you up yeah um you know? it's it, it's great to talk to you because even when i interview the islanders you know, I mean, and and as you know, going on press tours yourself, like I have to stay away from certain topics. I uh, I will be asked to take out things from interviews, and I've done that for all the Islanders because they've said too much. And I, by the way, I never think it's bad what they say, but they always try to keep it locked. Like even when you were on for the traders, there were certain things that I was not able to ask in terms of the gameplay or how it's all pieced together. But all in all, since you were on this show. Do you feel like it is just a good representation? Like your experience is truly what we saw? <laughs> See, I haven't, I, I think we've talked about this You've not watched but, your season. I have not watched my season. I can't really respond to that because I just, I can't get myself to watch it. I Like eventually I will, but like, I still like, I, I should wear like a heart rate monitor and just see how high my heart rate gets. I, I started the first episode and it's like I couldn't breathe watching myself. It was so <laughs> hard. But I can watch well, I myself was... on Traders. I can watch myself on Traders. <laughs> there's, there's something about Love Island. I, I think I just know, like, my first three weeks on Love Island, I had it rough. You know? Oh, yeah. I mean, you really... And I was watching clips of you once you got to the uh, the hideaway um, you know, like, and, or when you guys went into that room and it was so funny cause it was like, it seemed like you were really amped up and kind of nervous and you're right. Like, I don't think I could go back and watch myself do anything like that. Yeah. And like, that's the difference. Like traders, I had like this newfound confidence, like, and I've always had that confidence. It was just love Island. Like I was a fish out of water and I had no yeah. idea what to do in that kind of environment traders and like any other kind of game show like if i were to do like deal or no deal island or anything like that like even if i didn't do love island first i would be more confident doing those shows than doing love island yeah well i mean listen this week or this past week we had one of your castmates from season five harrison enter the villa as a bombshell now harrison i think was out on day 15 of season five and he's like a diamond dealer. He's like Mr. Hot Stuff, smooth guy. What is your opinion on Harrison having been around him and have, I mean, is there any room in this game for Harrison at this point? Oh, no. Like he, he was a dead man coming in. Like there was no yeah. way he was making the final four. And I think, yeah, I think Cassie and Harrison had to have known that, but they're just coming in, making their TV moment. Maybe they can get like a brand deal when they come out or like maybe some more social media. It's not so much for them as well. Like I, I think it's a marketing tactic by Peacock to, you know, get people to go watch the previous season. You know, you keep your Peacock subscription now a month or two longer because now you're watching season <laughs> five. Went back and watch season five. 
If that yeah, makes- I mean, that's a no, it totally makes sense. And you're right. Like, I mean, by the way, I'm locked in on Peacock. Like, that is my number one streaming service just because of Bravo. But like Love Island, I mean, I'm shocked that Love Island, like it's it's doing better than Bravo shows on the actual cable. And I was like, they should just switch Love Island USA to like five nights or five, six nights a week on Bravo or like start rerunning it because it got really popular. Yeah. And another thing is, I think Peacock is the king of reality TV right now. Like they dominate. Like if you have the Peacock subscription, they dominate reality TV. And I think there's just more to come. And I, I bet some of the producers are now regretting. Like, I don't know why they do a Love Island games this year. I don't know if they need to like change the game for or like, do they need cameramen from like Love Island? To yeah. go? <laughs> like, that's what I'm, I'm seriously like, I, I bet they're like punching themselves like all over the place. Yeah. Like they, this is like a perfect season for games. Like you have all this hype now from Love Island season six, and now you have to like let that dissipate and go into season seven. You don't have games or anything to hold people off till season seven. And Bernie, what's so interesting too is that you had said you immediately went into the traders, and we've already filmed the third season of the traders, so there's nobody on this cast that can immediately go into Trader season four because that is yet to be determined when that's going to start filming. So I do wonder if they didn't realize it was going to be as big of a hit as it has been to keep that energy rolling. And I would be, I would love to know behind the scenes if people are like spitballing last minute ideas to get something going in that love Island name for the franchise to keep building on Peacock. Yeah. And like, it doesn't even have to be love. Island. There's definitely Islanders this season that are going to be on trader season four. Like I, like I don't think anybody has to like make a, bad lottery ticket or bad guess. Like it, there's somebody from this season that's going to be on Trader season four. Well, speaking of that, who are your, I mean, like as I guess as a business person and who I believe will eventually produce reality TV shows one day <laughs> as that person. And then also as the person that watches the show as a fan, who do you think those stars are who, you well, know, if you produce the show and if you just are a fan of the show, who are those people for you? Like future. I think Leah would make, a fantastic faithful like the way like i'd be scared to accuse her sitting at that table the way she just fires up <laughs> like you don't make her a traitor you make her a faithful because i feel like she would be like defending the hell out of herself and i think Liv would be fantastic for yeah. like traitors and rob to rob i'm trying to think who else aaron's already played kaylor's you know kaylor's kaylor <laughs> um <laughs> i also think I don't know, maybe Cordell or Serena too, but like the top three are definitely Rob, Liv, and um, Leah. And then now I'm thinking Janae and Kenny. I think, but the top three are definitely Rob, Liv, and Leah for Traders season four. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely agree with you. Uh, there's been so many great personalities throughout. And I, I wonder if there was a change in like casting just because they really picked a lot of live wires. They pick people that are interesting. I mean, Rob has not been able to make a relationship work, but he is interesting on camera. And people have uncovered all of these things about Rob is that he does seem to come from like an artsy kind of family. He's always been out there doing like, you know, weird things, not just a snake wrangler, but like he seems like a really interesting guy. And I keep flip-flopping on my opinions about Rob. At first, I thought he was like Jax Taylor from Vanderpump Rules. And then I was like, oh, maybe he's like a sensitive guy. Like, I've changed my opinion multiple times. Um, what is your take on on Rob? Because I think it's he's lasted the whole time without having a full relationship. Yeah, and I would say I would try to stop comparing Rob to somebody else. I think that's like where a lot of people get lost. They try to like connect him to somebody else. And he's not. He's just Rob. And Rob isn't. Um, I think we kind of talked about it. Like at first we're like, is he this mastermind? I'm like, if he's this mastermind, he's going to get back with Leah or Liv. And Rob's just been playing Rob. And I think that's like what makes Love Island so great is like the people that are most authentic are the fan favorites of the show. Whether you hate him yeah, or love yeah. him. You know, so I think no, it... Rob has been authentically himself the whole time. I do think um, maybe there was a little bit of, you know, I don't, I think he probably wanted to leave with Andrea. He got talked into staying and, you know, he's been kind of checked out of the whole Love Island experience. Like he's always probably comparing a girl to Andrea. And I think he brought Daniela back just for Aaron and Kaylor. Cause like, I think, you know, Aaron, he's got a backup plan and bringing Daniela back to the villa would give Kaylor some closure. Cause she can talk to the guy that Aaron was with not so much for, you know, just 
he didn't I don't think he brought Daniela back for himself, if that makes sense. I never saw the connection there. And then he broke it off last night. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, too, is we saw Raw being disinterested, and you could tell he was just, like, kind of looking out into the distance, getting that thousand-yard Rob stare that he does, and uh, he finally told Daniela his, you know, he was he was open about it, but yeah, Rob, and tonight is going to be where, like, a couple, like, a big couple gets out of the villa. Who is your prediction who that will be? So this is lucky because I just did a podcast. I've done two podcasts today, and I've changed. Sorry, my- man, you're 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 on no. fire now. We all want. No, yeah, it. I'm on fire, and I've got to talk about it a lot. Now I've been really starting to think, because um, for a while I was thinking, you know, Kayla and Aaron are pretty much done. We've seen everything that they're gonna do, like their boyfriend and girlfriend. There's nothing really left for them, besides family night. So it's like, and I know producers. Are, you know, they might have a conversation with the Islanders while they're voting and trying to like maybe pick which one's best to send home. And it's just like, is there anything left with Kayla and Aaron? Like, do we have to really see them go through family night? And I know there's some people have been saying online that Kayla's mom has been active online and she does not like Aaron. So like there's some drama left from family night, but it's like, does Kayla really need to go through family night to get that? And it's like, are the Islanders are going to pick for their fa- um, friends? You know, and then they're going to, if they go for their friends, they're going to pick Kayla, Kayla and Aaron. But at the same time, like th- there's nowhere for them to go. They're not going to make the final four. Then you have Harrison and Sierra and they have a relationship that has the potential to go somewhere. You know, like you could be completely shutting them off to any future relationship if you let them go home tonight. So like there's that. And then Daniela and Aaron the, uh, or Rob, I mean, Daniela and Rob, the, there's no reason to pick them. Like they're, they're Daniela is definitely going home tonight. There might be a way to save Rob if Cassie gets the pick, but I think they might pick um, Kayla and Aaron is kind of my guess. Cause they're going to do friendship Island first, but I, I kind of hope they pick Harrison and Sierra because it's just like, we could see a relationship develop still this late in the game. But at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter who they choose to save. They're not going to make the final four. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, to, for the uninitiated, explain what family night is and explain these final steps of the game going into that final four. Yeah. So I think the final four vote is tonight. I, I think it's tonight. So we're going to find tonight. out. Who, yeah. So we get to vote for the final four tonight. Cause I, I saw an Instagram, um, Love Island posted, like, get your phones ready to vote tonight. So this is going to be the vote for the final four. Um, so, like, it really doesn't matter who is saved tonight. But, okay, the what the Islanders have left, they have to survive family night. And then they'll find out who was voted into the final four. So at the end of the day, they really don't have much they can do at this point to make the final four. Like, we're, we're going to see everything that we're going to see so uh family night is just like they're gonna get a video from their family telling them how much they like the the couple and (laughs) after that is when we actually get to vote for the winners of love island is after family night is when we get to choose so there's not much time left for the islanders to really sway our minds and then after family night you have your final dates and that's it that's love island you are heavy into gameplay. Do you think any of those Islanders on there right now that are existing are really like as paying attention to the gameplay as you were? And who do you think that is? Uh, I, I don't like, and personally, when I got to this part of the show as well, I wasn't too concerned about winning the show. My my goal was just to get to the final four and I made it to the final four. That was kind of my goal at this point. Cause there's not much you can do at this point to really sway anybody's opinion of you. And like you, you can't control family night. You can't control what your family is going to say. So at this point, it's just kind of riding it out. Like you figure at this point, like you had to figure out your couple post Casa and ride that out to make it to the final four. You can't switch up after Casa. Yeah, no, I mean, well, listen, I mean, I really thought, and we had talked previously, if if Aaron had treated the Casa Amor experience differently, 
I thought there was a real good chance that Kaler and Aaron, if Aaron had treated the Costa more experience differently, that they would have made it to the final. And I think Aaron really tanked them. Like I know that they're closed off now and they're boyfriend and girlfriend, but I think everybody is really soured on Aaron. Um, do you agree that they had a chance to, to completely take this thing, but maybe screwed it up? Yeah, I, I definitely, they definitely were top three before Casa Amor. They were definitely top three. I think they could have even, they would definitely have be, beat out Kendall and Nicole and probably Leah and Miguel. But now they have no shot at making the final four, in my opinion. Like Leah and Miguel is going to take over. Kendall and Nicole are, and Nicole are definitely higher above them. And the people that they would have been competing against is definitely Janae and Kenny and Nicole, not Nicole, um, Janae and Kenny and Cordell and Serena. Those are the top two. I think Cordell and Serena and Kenny and I keep saying Kenny. Kenny <laughs> and Janae are top two. Cordell and Serena, Kenny and Janae, top two right there. Now, and so you think uh, Nicole and uh, uh, Kindle don't have a chance? I don't think they can take it. I don't think they can win. The problem. What, that, why? Why? Th the problem that they've missed, and this is important for any future seasons of love island like you really can't get away with winning love island anymore since season four without having conflict in your relationship at least once like people need to see your full range of emotions in the villa like they're, they're missing that aspect because it's like okay we we really don't know how kendall and nicole are going to act on the outside world when they have serious conflict come up like how do they handle conflict we have no idea how they handle conflict we've well, seen it i mean but could you argue that when uh, Nicole was trying to choose between him and Miguel and he was having to like, you know, I thought Nicole was actually going to go for Miguel and Nicole actually then chose Ken. Isn't that a little bit of a conflict that he was having to like wait to see if she was going to go more towards him or Miguel? Yeah, I, but I, I feel like she's played it way too safe, too, because it, it almost feels it almost comes off as fake when you play it safe. Does that make sense? No, it makes sense. But I mean, Kendall gets that knock a lot that he's just like a little too polished, a little too nice, a little like I hear that comment about him in particular a lot. And I love that people were saying that he was throwing he was giving bad advice to his bros in Casa and telling them like, hook up, man. Yeah, yeah. And that was potentially a strategic move on his part, which is funny. Like, I, I feel like, you know, I feel like they're both kind of this really cookie cutter couple but they do seem like they really, I mean, I feel like they're going to continue on past the villa. I do too. I, I definitely think they're going to work outside the villa. It's just for the viewers at home. They don't have anything like concrete to know, like how they handle conflict. I think, I think that's their biggest, like it's not even their fault. It's just like, sometimes you need that conflict for the viewers at home to like get reasons to root for you. If that makes sense. Well, no, totally. I mean, that's a, it's such a great point. And, and, and just hearing you say that, then I've got to say who's going to take this whole thing would be Serena and Cordell, because we really saw that conflict and they've had such an interesting relationship where I didn't think Serena was even into Cordell. And then Casa happened. Dea came back and then Cordell obviously fell apart, realized how badly it hurt Serena's feelings. I didn't realize Serena was protecting her heart. I just felt like she felt friend vibes. And now I didn't think they would be back on track, but they're back on track. So for me, that would be the most unique story out of anybody else there. Would you agree? I totally agree. I, like the, I think they're taking it right behind. And then it's second is Janae and Ke Kenny. I keep going Kendall and Kenny. <laughs> I know it's it. And then yeah. Cordell. There's too so many hard K's. Yeah. All these K's. Yeah. But Janae, I think Cordell and Serena. Not Serena. Yeah. Cordell <laughs> and Serena are taking it just because we've seen their full storyline. It's been a full roller coaster. And like, and the both on both sides, like, you can't view one of them as the bad guy. Like, you can't view Serena for acting the way she did pre Casa. You can't blame um, Cordell. Cordell for acting the way he did in Casa. And like, they resolved their issues. It was a great storyline of them resolving their issues. He fully opened up to her and I think they're going to win the show. I know what you're right though, because Serena, we saw her journey, but also with Cordell, I genuinely believed he felt bad for certain aspects of how he handled Casa. Whereas Aaron, I don't believe it. And he seems super defensive. Anytime anything gets brought up. I mean, movie night, he was like, no, you don't understand the context, the context. And it's like, dude, 
the, how, how much context can we have? And I was talking to Liv yesterday, and at the end of the interview, I said, hey, if there's one message you could give the Islanders right now, like a, a pass messages to your girls, what would you do? And, he, and she was like, well, I heard that Casa was just way worse than what we saw. And, you know, she wanted to warn potentially Kaler about that. But I think I just don't buy, I don't, I just don't buy Aaron. Like, and I used to like really believe in him and I don't know, like I don't, but, but Cordell, I completely believe in. Yeah, no, Cord- Cordell fully explained everything he did. So that way when movie night came, you know, Serena was prepared to see everything that he talked about, even though it, even though it still sucked and Cordell, you could see on Cordell, he sucked watching it. Like it sucked to watch it back. And I think the way that, I love this season because we have so many different ways of people handling situations that are very similar. Like we had Cordell and Aaron, they're like complete opposites on how they handled post Casa. Then we had Dea and Kat, how they handled post Casa. Like um, Kat wanted the best for Kenny. She's like, yeah, go back and get back with Janae. I think you got to do what's best for you in here. And then we had Dea who like fully exploded when, uh, Cordell was going to break up with her. So then she went and just like <laughs> sabotaged everything. So I love both like aspects. And I think that's why another reason the season's so good is you have people handling different situations in completely different ways. Yeah. Um, I'm always like taken to when I talk to the Islanders, how much we don't see. You know, like they'll like, we see tons and obviously it's every night, but there are so many conversations and so many moments that we don't see. And I'm just like, that's wild. And I almost like, would you ever want to see a world in which like Big Brother at one point we had live feeds? Would you ever want to give uh, viewers more access to this show? Or do you think it only works when they've edited it into storylines? I think it only works for Love Island when they edited it into storylines, just because there, I think there is a lot of production used in Love Island that people don't see. And I think it would kind of wreck the experience for viewers. Yeah. At home. That makes sense. Like even you and I having this conversation, you know, like people are only going to see if this is a Love Island conversation, people might only see two minutes of our 45 minute conversation. And that little bit might be used completely out of context of everything else that we're talking about in this inter- like 45 minute or hour conversation, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. No, no, you're yeah. Uh, yeah, but, that, that... but an opposite show that I've done traders, I would love for people to see everything that happens on traders. See, that's wild. Like to me, like you would, you would want live feeds of traders. Like what are, what did we miss on the traders that we didn't see? Cause I feel like that really deter, like that depends on editing. I like the way Peter, Janelle, Trishel and I like game plans, like it was, it was awesome. And people really missed out on like, huge game plan plays that we were trying to make and miss <laughs> and we missed some but we hit some that were spectacular and it it doesn't hit the same that you guys didn't get to for me it doesn't hit the same because it's like we like us figuring out poverty was a traitor and then we were going so hard at dan and poverty when janelle was getting banished and they didn't show any of the poverty aspect of like why we thought poverty was a traitor and like so people missed out. It's just like they're, you know, they're protecting the traders because it's it sucks when everybody knows who the traders are really early on in the game. Yeah, but like we we were doing so good in the game, but I understand why <laughs> it affected them well in the edit because maybe it's not as fun as to view it that way. Uh, I truly wonder now that you got me thinking. I wonder next week at the season finale of Love Island if they'll put any sort of tease for Traders season three. Like, I, I mean, not a full preview, but I wonder if they'll tease season three of the Traders because a lot of people will be tuning in and and streaming that that Love Island episode. And I think it's a a great way to you know say, hey, Peacock has other competition reality shows as well. Yeah, I I hope they do, or like maybe advertise Trader season two or. Like, I'm really bummed they did not do Love Island Game Season 2. They should have had something to be like, hey, come they, back. You know, remember. but they they could do it immediately. I mean, like, they might put it into production, like, two months from now. Like, who knows? Like, I think seeing the popularity, you never know. Um, uh, back to this current season, do you think with Janae uh, picking Kenny... Like Kenny seems like a really good guy, but he's so soft spoken. He's so kind of like, you know, and we saw obviously he was so broken up after Casa. 
But like, in a sense, he is not as dynamic as some of the other men in the villa. Do you think that hurt Janae at all in terms of the overall story that it's presented to the viewers? You know, I think Janae was a really, she's been a really strong character um, this whole season. And I think she was going to make the finale no matter what. How pl- how high she placed in the finale depended on what guys she coupled up with. Yeah. And I, there's really no other guy she could couple up with that would get her higher than Kenny, if that makes sense. Okay, yeah. That actually yeah. does make sense. I was just thinking about, like, Kenny, like, he's so soft-spoken, and even they went into hideaway, and they, they had their sexy time. And I, I really feel at this point, everybody, in a sense, is closed off. Um, Miguel and, uh, Leah, do you believe in their relationship at all? Like, I mean, like this is, I I don't feel like you said, I don't feel like they're going to the end because I don't believe Miguel. I mean, I think he likes Leah a lot and I think Leah likes Miguel, but I think they're kind of at the same time, there's a slight disinterest in each other as well. You know, I think they are going to make it to the end together. That's for sure. Of Love Island. But I'm working outside. Like I see... Our top three couples, well, I, I don't, I'm not saying these are top three in the finale, but like top three couples that are going to work on the outside is Serena and Cordell, uh, Kendall and Nicole and Janae and Kenny. I see that all of them work, trying to work on the outside. I don't see Leah and Miguel working on the outside. Okay. And I don't, not because they, not because they hate each other or anything like that. I no. just think they, I, I just. Yeah, I just think they, they're both attractive people, but I think they both... I mean, that's the weird thing about Casa was I still don't understand how Miguel went in there and said, all of these girls are made for him. Like, oh, they've got in my brain and they may... And then immediately he didn't want to be with the girl that he brought back. And I just, I was so boggled by that, that he wanted to get back with Leah after he said those girls were the the tippy top. So I was so confused. Like, That I mean, and I know your experience is different because you actually did find somebody and you're not a player in that kind of way with women, but it is, I mean, like these guys' heads were turned so quickly. I mean, is that surprising to you at all? Or is that just always what happens on Love Island? This is hard because I think producers play a role in this part as well. When you go to Casa, they, they want the guys to turn their heads. They want the girls not to turn their heads. So that way it's the guys being the bad guys. Cause I think there is a, like our, tar- like the target audience of love Island is female base as well. So I think, you know, they like that storyline of the guys being bad and, you know, like, cause they're influencing the guys to do bad things when you're there. Like, I can't say they're influencing, but you know, they're tough. Like I, I would say they're influencing definitely the guys to maybe go out and do things they normally wouldn't do. But, um, you can still make your own choices too at the end of the day. But I think like some of the things Aaron was saying, I was like, who told you that? Like, that's a good idea to do. Like, you know, how he, <laughs> at some point he's in his beach hut and he goes, yeah, I, I think I'm just going to pretend Kaylor doesn't even exist. I'm like, somebody told you to say that. And that's not a good <laughs> mindset to have for Casa. You let a producer get in your head at some point. I don't know where, but that's not something that Aaron I saw a week ago would say. Yeah, no, it was. I mean, it really blew me away. But I love that 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 thing that you just said about uh, that narrative that they want, and because it's primarily female viewers, and in a chance, it's a way for you know uh, for for girls to get upset at the injustices that men do to them. It's like a really holds a mirror up to society because we see that all the time in real life. But this is actually we see it there as well, and so women are able to come together and say oh my God, men are horrible, which I mean, I agree with, but it's like this, I mean, that's a really interesting thing. I didn't really think about that fully. It gets people upset and it gets people like tuned in. Yeah. And I, I would say like, I also just want to put it out there. That not all guys are like the guys you see on Love Island either. Like, you know, like th- this isn't your stereotypical man on Love Island. Like I, I'm your kind of stereotypical man probably in real life or maybe not stereotypical. No, dude, Bergy, I think you're actually atypical. I, I think... Because you seem like a gentleman. You seem like you were, I mean, we've heard your stories even on this podcast about like, you were like a friend first and then you would date. Like you tend to build relationships and then that turns romantic. And I think that is, I don't think a lot of people are like that anymore. And I think that's probably why people like you so much. I think, I mean, to me, it's, I think your casting on last season was really interesting because you go against the grain of a lot of the other men, the typical men on these shows. 
Yeah, no, I definitely go against the typical man on these shows, but I, I'm not. Uh, but I'm saying where these guys are and where I am, like, so this is like the people on the show. This is where I am. Most most men are probably over here, if that makes sense. That's yeah, you know what I mean. So I'm like, it's not as extreme. Not as extreme. Like all these men are terrible. This is why people, men in our society, are like way over here, but like your normal man is over here. So I'm like, that that's not your normal man on Love Island. Don't like be saying all men are terrible, but like, you know, you know, like have about, ba- there's a balance to this. Well, I mean, Bergy, I, I mean, listen, I, I, you're, you're the best, but I gotta, th- I think maybe all men potentially are terrible except for you, except for you. But I think, <laughs> <All right>. I, <laughs> so, okay. So this last week, nothing really can change the course of this game, right? Like we had the bombshell come in last night, you know, they had the heart rate monitor set up. And of course, Miguel got turned on by the new girl. But at this point, there's nothing really insane. Like we're in a tractor beam for the end of this game. Nothing crazy. I mean, they'll say crazy things are going to happen, but we're pretty much just coasting at this point. Yeah. Honestly, after post Casa, there's you're on the trajectory to the end. So like the things you decide in Casa is what get you to the end. If that makes sense. Like, your gameplay in Casa Amor is what decides the final four, realistically. If that yeah. makes sense. If Rob came yeah. back and said, I want to get back with Liv, like, there, there's this shot at the final four. But since he didn't do that, now he's not going to make the final four. Does that make sense? Yeah, it totally does. Yeah, the Liv thing is, I mean, maybe a missed opportunity. And I think, why do you think that people still want to see... Um, uh, Rob and I'm sorry, what? Oh, I said Rob and Leah. Yeah, why do you think people still want to see Rob and Leah together? That one I don't understand. I think that one... I think people like them so much in the beginning and they just have that little hope in the back of their heads that they could still get together. Or do you think it's just like us as a general public, we're insane. And this drive, the show drives us to insanity and we just make, we want to see as much mess as quickly as, because they were a mess together. They were, they were not, I mean, like it wasn't like magic. You know, that's the thing. It's like, you know what nostalgia is? Like you have this, like, like I love star Wars, but what star Wars is today, I absolutely hate. And I think that, like, I, I'm living, like, I'm hoping for Star Wars Episode Four, even though I turn on Star Wars Acolyte and I'm seeing one of the worst television shows I've ever seen, you know? So I, have, like, I, I have not started watching Acolyte yet, but you are one of the haters of uh, Acolyte? It, it's, like, the acting or screenwriting is so bad. Like, you have a character standing and just doing stuff. It's like, why are you standing like that? That doesn't look anything like real, like what an actor would be doing in a normal scenario. So do you, wait, I, did you, I know this is off topic. Did you like Mandalorian? Oh, I love Mandalorian. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and, um, and there was a little, I could nerd out about star Wars, but that's what I'm. Yeah, saying. no, no, I'm a, I'm a star Wars guy. And I, it's interesting that like, yeah, I have not picked up the acolyte yet. And I was like, why haven't I picked up the acolyte yet? So it's interesting to hear people talk about it. Um, and by the way, just so we can tie it back to Love Island, we do know that uh, Cordell, uh, sorry, Kendall and Nicole love Star Wars. Kendall and yeah. Nicole, uh, they talked about Star Wars at one point. Um, and also Aaron, fun fact, he's never been to a Trader Joe's. So we'll see if he actually gets to go to a Trader Joe's with, uh, with uh, now Now you've got me forgetting all of their names, with Kaylor after this. Um, so hey names. It just, <laughs> it's just, yeah. Yeah, fuck. Um, okay. <laughs> so uh as we wind down here um i mean i really what has surprised you because you have been keeping up with what everybody's talking about what the word on the street what have been some of the things that you've heard uh from people that have surprised you or made you think differently about the game even though you experienced the game firsthand you know okay that's a good question because i don't, I don't know if i can really answer that uh, I don't know if anything's really changed my mind about the game because you really can't sway public opinion either. Um, the I, at this point, I I really don't know if anything's changed my mind. You know? Yeah. Was so, there? I mean, were you surprised by any audience reaction? Like, I think we're both surprised that like the Rob Leah thing keeps out there. That's a little surprising. Was there anything else? Where you're like, ah, oh, God, I can't believe people reacted that way um what was it i think some of the cordell hate like you know when cordell brought back Bea, that was a little surprising to me like how much hate he was getting like nobody was kind of seeing his view um i felt like 
you know, a lot of people were like, why would he do that to Serena after, you know, of her being of the three weeks of her just kind of like being distanced from Cordell and not, I don't think people really understood that. Like the guy had to be the bad guy. I think that that was kind of where I disagreed with a lot of viewers. Now, I don't know if you, you can answer this because your experience was different about going directly into uh, traders, but like, do they call like the winner and then does everybody get their phones back that night? Like, are you allowed to start going on Twitter and Instagram and all of that stuff? No. So you're not allowed to go get your phone back until the episode airs. Oh, and they film it like two days beforehand, right? Yeah. When we finished the finale, we had to wait another two days. So Wow. So potentially this Friday is when they'll film or Friday or Saturday? Yeah. Yeah. They'll probably, it'll be, yeah, probably Friday. They'll be filming the finale and then wow. we'll get it. Um, and the crazy thing is, you know, it takes three days to film the final dates as well. So like they're, what's today? Tuesday? Yeah. Okay. I think, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, oh yeah. Cause we vote tonight. This is for the final four. So yeah, like, um, they'll know who the final four are. And I think that's the, um, cause they're 17 hours ahead of us. Sorry to make this all confusing. So we vote. No, tonight. no, no. So the votes are done by midnight, right? I think. Yeah. So then, um, that's it goes 17 hours ahead of that. And we're in Fiji. So then Ariana Ariana Maddox is going to walk out tonight for us when the votes are in, and then she's going to go out and get rid of the rest of the Islanders. And there's their final four, and they're filming their final dates tonight, or not tonight, but tomorrow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, like, yeah, makes sense. Okay, yeah, so then they don't get their phone. They don't get their phones back until it airs, which is that's interesting. And then like like. I mean, so you really didn't know public perception of you on the show until after Traders, or did you kind of get like, I mean, you probably got a good feeling too when they asked you to be on Traders. Yeah. Um, I, I had a, so the crazy thing is um, like through the grapevine and like knowing what was going on in the season, I knew I was a fan favorite on Love Island just because you do have production interaction and, you know, they're not supposed to tell you what's going on or like if you're a fan favorite, but like you'd get small hints here and there. And like me never being in the bottom during voting, that, that gave me a solid hint that like, Hey, people actually like me. And then, you know, you get your little hints through production, the people around you that you're doing really well. So I kind well, of I mean, I the, the the Harrison vote on your season when he left at like day fifteen. I think some people were up in arms because they were shocked that Harrison left because it was an audience vote, and then all of a sudden they switched it. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, but I was reading comments uh, even today, and they're like, "Oh, it should have been Fergie, or it should have been this person." And I thought that was interesting that people like it just see it seems like it's interesting how it's all pieced together um and it definitely seems like you were a fan favorite yeah no there was a solid argument for like just like andrea leaving there was a solid argument for me leaving like the same night harrison left because like we dumped harrison when like i had i wasn't coupled up with anybody but i was saved by the public so a lot of i i know a lot of people were mad about that they're like why are we sending people in couples home before we send bergie home like <laughs> you know? and, and that just told me i'm like i like as a viewer i've never seen that but like me being in the villa i'm like this is a new season and then on season one of love island usa um you know did you you watched my season right yeah yeah so anna dumped herself right and during a recoupling if there's ever a missed number you are also dumped if a person self-eliminates that yeah. happened on season one and then that other boy was eliminated with the girl. And so I was like, oh, this is my last night. So I remember like Anna's dumping herself. I was like, oh, I get to walk out with Anna. Like, I'm like, this is like, you know, kind of symbolic that we both are coupled up day one. Now she's self-eliminating. Like I self-eliminated. Now we get to walk out together. And I, I'm just standing there after she dumped herself. So I was like, do I need to go pack my bags? So they're like, no, you're staying. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was fully um. convinced. And I, I hear it. We can't send Bergie home over the speaker. Like while I'm standing there waiting for them to say Bergie, you I'm waiting for the text on my phone to say I've been dumped. And they're like, we can't send Bergie home. I was just like, okay, so like I'm still in the villa. So, <laughs> oh my God. Like, I, I felt like the game was changing to keep me in. So like that was that was another impression yeah. of my favorite. 
Um, uh, okay, finally then, well, f- first off, uh, Kane, who, you know, got eliminated uh, the other day, he went on Instagram Live and he did a bunch of, or TikTok, he did all these lives and he was just like letting it rip. Like, I mean, w- was Kane just like a, a, a wild cowboy? Could production not rein Kane in? Because he was revealing tons of stuff. I, he's going to get in trouble soon. I don't know what kind of punishment he can get. I, I don't know what happens if I like go all out and say all the secrets and stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, don't, don't do, 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 do. I don't, I don't want to get you in trouble. Do not say all no, the secrets. But, but like, I'm yeah. just saying for Kane, like, I, I have no idea what the punishment is because I've never tested those waters. So I just, I'm curious, like, what is going to happen to Kane here in a little bit? Because he's saying way too much. And I, I, he's, and he's I a liability. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he's, he's going to get, there's a reason he got the boot real quick. Like <laughs> they might have kept him in there, but I think production didn't like him and he didn't like dealing with production. So they got rid of him as fast as they could. Yeah. And also he was going to go anyways. He made that like weird demand of uh, what's her name of like, I don't want you to go have a date with. Like, I mean, it was like, he was kind of, I, I mean, I'm, I was, he's funny, but I'm fine with him going. And by the way, you never said how did, what, did you like Harrison on your season? Yeah, I was neutral about him. I think he's more of a, guy's guy than a what is it a girl's guy or guy's girl what do you say guy's girl yeah yeah guys i don't know he, he's definitely more of a guy's guy um he did like the same mistake connor made um like you know like he was in a couple with destiny like and it felt like did he just couple up with her to be safe because not to be sound racist or anything but like being an interracial couple because it looks better and then you know he just kind of like took a and then Emily showed out and he took a step back and then fully pursued Emily without ever talking to Destiny about how things were going with, you know, Emily. And he just fully like closed off with Destiny and pretended like Destiny never existed. It was really weird. Yeah. Um, geez. Okay. Well, uh, are you still enjoying the show? Because I've noticed I enjoy the show, but like, I feel like a lot of the dramatic tension now that everybody is kind of closed off. Like I said, now that we're nearing the end and it just shows us as an audience, I'm like, oh, I like the dirt. I like I like the the fights and like the craziness and movie nights and all this stuff. And now everybody's professing their love for one another. And I don't know if I'm just like hardened and dead inside where I'm like, I don't want this love for one another. I want people to be fighting. Are you still enjoying it every night? Do you like seeing them closed off or this is just the natural end of Love Island always? <laughs> I think this is the natural end of Love Island. I don't think producers are shaking anything up. I don't think the Islanders really want to shake anything up. Like you get the feeling like everybody's just kind of wrapping up. Cause you get the vibe from the producers. Like they're, they're done with the show. You, you're kind of done with the show. Everybody's like almost done with the show. So it's like, it's time to wrap up and get ready to go home. If that yeah. makes sense. Like that's well, where every mindset goes. And it's just like, let's not argue about this anymore. We're leaving in like four days. Like let's not, stir it up well what a summer it's been i was just talking about that at the beginning of today's show is that like this is, it was a great summer experience and it you know I'm, I'm glad that we all got to have this together uh hopefully you'll come on one more time after the final results uh i would love to break everything down on the fin- finale with you yes i i definitely will come back and we can break down the finale do you want to do that monday yeah man whenever you can do it i'll, I'll work around okay. your schedule sounds good okay thanks dude